Hello, I'm Jay Jermaine Bay with Lodian Morris Pradium, Monte, Colorado. The acronym is ANPAC. I am the Chief Judge of Consulate Court. Uh, today is Class 30. Class 30, uh, what did we learn in Class 29? We started understanding the power of what we call the contempt of court order. So we started learning order. More than now, using the power of Consulate Court to bring back order. Order where? In the dominions of Morocco. So if more start to really onboard this knowledge and to integrate this knowledge, one thing that Moors must always understand at all times, at all points in time, we must not use consular court as a bludgeon against foreigners. Moors have to come into this movement with love instead of hate. As we start to understand the power of consular court, Moors must always understand equality. Noble Drali told us all to come into this movement with love instead of hate. So understand more that if we start to understand the power of consular court in Morocco, we must always maintain equality. As the good brother Taj Reed Bay has taught us that Mother Nature's, nature's law does not recognize person or station. We must adhere to that. We must understand that we have to come into this in order to create order once again. Because Moors come back into the power of consular court and use consular court in a negative way, we will not be able to maintain our jurisdiction or our dominions because Mother Nature does not recognize person or station. So therefore, we will lose once again our respect for Mother Nature, Mother Nature, and we will lose our consular courts, which means we will lose our states, all right? As we learn in the ICJ report, we learned that the ICJ threw out France's courts. The ICJ threw out the United States of America's courts. Why? They were all de facto. What does de facto mean? You're working in a negative state, a right negative state of mind. So as more come back into the consciousness of statehood, understand we must come into this with love, all right? So let's go ahead and get started with class number 30. As usual, we always open up with the mission and vision statement and that's to create the United States of Morocco again. All right, so let's be redundant as usual. How do we do that? We do that with discipline. Discipline determines our destination. What's our destination? It's about this desire to create the United States of Morocco again, as it was prior to the year 1492. So how do we do that? The first steps, the fundamentals, Moors, are all about circle seven, state of facts, which is the facts of your state, okay? So as Moors are starting to put together their constitutions out there, we must always keep in mind the circle seven, state of facts, all right? So as Moors are starting to understand state of facts and judicial notice, exhibit A, constitution, exhibit B, state seal, exhibit C, provincial state flag, Exhibit D, Empire of Morocco flag. The empire is very important, Moors, of Morocco. Exhibit E, Allegiance and Oath. Exhibit F, Public Inauguration Video. All right, Moors, and we start to integrate our states. So, so far, we've now gone through three stages that Moors can start to use, right? What are the three stages so far that we're talking about? First, we start talking about state of facts, judicial notice through consular court, using the power of the state to protect your sovereign rights, right? So that was state of facts. So far, we've gone over the injunctive relief order. The injunctive relief is an order to the foreigners to stop their infringement of your state rights. Even though we may be talking about a subject matter, which is the jab, but the reality we're talking, state rights. And then we just start talking about order, order, order. More is bringing order back into the dominion, okay? Through that order, we're now issuing what's called a contempt of consular court order because they're going to infringe upon the rights of the state and the consular court, okay? Now, like I said, as more start understanding the power of consular court and we're bringing order, that means that more must be in order as well. Because if we're not in order, that means we're not following the law. And if we're not following nature's law, mother's law, that makes us outlaws. So anytime we're working outside of the law, that makes us outlaws. 
That means that now we cannot enforce the law because we're now in a de facto status. So Morris have to now come into this movement with love instead of hate. So let's utilize Council of Court for equality. Okay, Morris? Why do I say that? Today's class is really about equality. As more start to understand these first three steps, right? Now we must now get balance back into place. What, what, I'm, what do I mean when I say balance? As more start to get a little excited about council court and understanding some of the procedures and the power that council court has, we must understand we're trying to get things back into balance, back into order, okay? In order to do that, we're talking about equality. Guess who was always seeking equality for decades? The sultans of Morocco. They put in a lot of their um, treaties, the word equality. Equality is in a lot of the declarations, et cetera. We, more, more must study equality as we start to now come into this power of understanding statehood. So before we continue to keep talking about the power of constant court, let's remind ourselves of equality, okay? On behalf of who? Nature's law, mother's law, common law, jurisprudence. So let's talk about that today. So, as you can see up here, I got equality and not inequality. Morris must maintain equality. That's how we lost our dominions in the first place because we started to get into inequality of infighting and understanding that we were misusing our own courts, etc. All right, so we need to get back to equality as we start understanding the power of statehood and the power of constant court. So today we're talking about justice. We're talking about how powerful justice is. What does justice mean to the average person? Most people think justice is about cops and judges, lawyers, etc. But justice is really about nature's law, common law, jurisprudence, and equality. It's just that justice happens to be how you bring your five principles in full circle. Your love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. But justice takes care of the other four principles. All right, so everything must be just. Justice is a compound word. Just is just. Just meaning what? Of law, right? Of principles, of principles, is justice is really just ist and ist i s t right as a suffix really means an ist is a specialist when you see a person as a pianoist the ist means specialist violinist ist is a specialist so we must be practice just ist Justice, just is, we must specialize in just, just what? Equality. It says Moors come into the power, understanding the power of statehood and the power of council court. We must specialize in just, just what? Just law of equality, okay? So today we'll talk about equal protection of the law, all right? That's what we've been talking about, the power of council court comes through the power of the state in your constitution, and your constitution talks about equal protection of the law, equality, okay? So we'll learn about that today, Morris, as we start understanding the power of constant court, as we start learning about um, how do we get redress, adverse claims to our land, we must always maintain balance and harmony, okay? So as we started learning more, Council Court of the State, we started learning about the state of facts, judicial notice, which is mediation. Keep that in mind, Moors. How do we open up as Moors? We open up seeking what? Friendly applications. We learned that. We're talking treaty. We're talking international law. Let's read Article 24, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. If any difference shall arise by either party infringing on any of these articles of this treaty, peace and harmony shall remain notwithstanding in the fullest force. That means Moors must maintain peace and harmony as well. 
until a friendly application shall be made for an arrangement. And until that application shall be rejected, no appeal shall be made to, hop, to arms. So what are we talking about? We're talking about equality more, not inequality. Okay? So if we're talking justice, we must now become justice, just ist, which means we must now become specialists in justice of equality. We'll keep learning about that. So what are we searching for? First, mediation. That's a friendly application, which is the Constitution, etc. That's your Circle 7 exhibits, discovery of friendly applications. Then we started learning about what? Number two, injunctive relief order, which is arbitration before litigation. What are we doing? We're still seeking an opportunity for redress. That way both parties can come to the table and talk about a friendly application of difference. We're still looking for a diplomacy more, right? We're looking for equality, not inequality. However, number three, contempt of court order. We're talking now fines, i.e. lawsuit, which is litigation. You see, more in law, when you're seeking equality, Mother Nature, Nature's law will reward you if you do right. But understand, in Nature's law, even Allah created the bees, B-E-E-S. Bees go about their business. They don't bother anybody. But if you bother them, if you harass them, if you hinder them, if you disrespect them, if you get in the way of their law, they were all born with a stinger. And with that stinger, they have every right to defend themselves. So as Moors get back into equality of statehood and constant court, you also have the right to use this stinger to now protect yourself and defend yourself through this pit. But the only way for nature's law to protect you First, you must come from equality of love and truth. Love, truth, peace, freedom, justice. So the justice comes when you cannot get recourse, redress of diplomacy. We must always seek equality first, folks. Okay? Now, as we started learning, contempt of court gets into the Act of Algeceras, Articles 101 and 102, which talks about fines, penalties, and confiscations. We're going to continue to learn about number four, which is your surety bond lien on property, which is penalties. We'll get into the Treaty of Madrid, 1880, Article 11, Act of Algeceras, 1906, Article 60, which talks about the CAD, the Morris D. Tax Commissioner, or you can have the word tax assessor, more specifically, assessor, notice of lien, surety bond, lien levied against the warranty deed. We'll learn all about that in the near future. Then we start to learn about, we're going to learn about number five, erga omnis principles of international law. We learned that the meaning is towards all or towards everyone. We're talking foreigners, towards them. We're talking state rights. We're talking about liens on warranty deeds. Trespass in land law, and then confiscation, sale of property to satisfy sanctions, court sanctions, which are these five principles. Mediation turns into litigation. Litigation turns into fines, penalties, and confiscations. But if we follow it in that order, then Mother Nature, nature's law, well, now understand we're trying to put things back in balance. We're looking for order. We're looking for equality. Okay? So, more as we'll learn today about justice, like I said, we'll learn about equal protection of the law. But first, we got to get back in balance before we go to number four. Okay? Listen, Morris. We briefly went over contempt of court order, right? 
So before we now get into penalties, we must now understand how to get back in balance. So we understand it using contempt of court through cost of court is not about revenge. It's about order, balance. Let's talk about that today. Okay, boy. So this is the Act of Algeceras, 1906, okay? As you can see, these are the notes by the President of the United States of America, right? The United States of America. You say, see how they write? They say United States, United States of America. Why did they put that on there? Because this is an international document. Remember, they operate as the United States domestically. They operate as the United States of America on an international level. So, here's a <coughs> proclamation by the President of the United States of America. Okay? So if I can have the Moors, I mean, the, <laughs> if I can have the mother, go ahead and read the proclamation, please. Um, whereas a general act and an additional protocol was concluded and signed on April 7, 1906 by the plenipotentiaries of the United States of America, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Belgium, Spain, France, Great Britain, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, Russia, and Sweden, the originals of which general, of which general act and additional protocol being in the French language are word for word as follows. All right, thank you, Mother. Okay, Morris. We're going to read what's called the preamble of the Act of Algeceras in order for all Moors to understand what is our obligation to foreigners and what are the foreigners' obligation to Moors. Moors must understand we're talking equality and not inequality, okay? So we're going to get into the preamble. The Moors scroll down right to the preamble. Okay, Mother, if I can get you to read. Uh, this part start, starting with the word inspired. Keep in mind this is the preamble, okay? Inspired by the interest attaching itself to the reign of order, peace, and prosperity in Morocco, and recognizing that the attainment thereof can only be effected by means of the introduction of reforms based upon the triple principle of the sovereignty and independence of His Majesty the Sultan, the integrity of his domains, and economic liberty without any inequality, have resolved upon the invitation of his, of his Sharifian majesty to call together a conference at Algeciras for the purpose of arriving at an understanding upon the said reforms, as well as examining the means for obtaining the resources necessary for their application, and have appointed as their delegates plenipotentiary the following. All right, thank you, Mother. Okay, Morris. Let's, uh, let's get an understanding. Why are we reading this? You have to understand, Morris, at this, at this time, 1906, the Sultan is looking for equality. Moors right now in the 21st century, century are looking for equality. But keep in mind, Moors, treaties are the supreme law of the land. So we must understand the consciousness of what's going on even in the year 1906 that's going to affect us now, even in the 21st century, all right? So let's get an understanding of equality. This is all about peace that's being seeked out by the Sultan. Remember what I said to the Moors. The word Sultan is just a title for someone holding, it's a placeholder for whoever's holding that title of government, okay? Let's understand what's going on in the preamble. Inspired by the interest attaching itself to the reign of order. So let's stop there. What is reign? That's, that's rulership, right? That's government. So government is coming back into order. Keep in mind, the Sultan called the, the Christian powers, the other foreigners, into this meeting. He summoned them. As more has already noted, the definition of more, M-O-O-R, the Black Law Dictionary, fourth edition, talks about more as being the officer of the court, that we summon the courts. So the Sultan summoned all the Christian powers. So now the Sultan is looking for what? Reign of order. We've been talking about order. He wants to talk about what? Peace and prosperity. So look at the order. 
Order first. What's order? Courts. Statehood. Jurisdiction. Getting back into the order of law. With law, you can create peace. Through the peace, then you can have prosperity. That's why their documents say amity, then commerce. Amity and commerce. Peace, tranquility, then commerce. The treaties are peace and friendship, then commerce. So first you must have reign of order, then you have peace, before you can get into prosperity. So Moors must understand, when you're using council court and the power of the state, what are we first trying to do? Get back into reigning in the order. Then we must be seeking peace at all times. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So then we get prosperity in Morocco once we achieve order and peace. Okay? Now, how do we get order? Sometimes in order to get order, sometimes things can be a little out of order in order to get things back in order. Sometimes you have to take the time to figure out how you're going to do that. Sometimes it requires you to have to really take two steps backwards in order to go forward. We know how it is. You might have a junky room in your house. You just keep walking past it. You're like, one of these days I'm going to fix it. But you know you have to put some time into it. Sometimes you walk into that <laughs> junky room, you got to take everything out of it just to make some space and then put everything back in an organized manner. So what are Moors doing, doing right now? First, we got to take two steps back and get <coughs> order of ourselves before we can have order of foreigners. What we're doing now, taking two steps back to create order of ourselves through our discipline. All right? Now, what's going to happen is there's still going to be some dysfunction going on when we deal with the foreigners. That's okay. Guess what? The reason why is because now they're taking two steps back. They have to rearrange themselves mentally as well. They have to put themselves in a position of what are we going to do to deal with Moors who have cost of court. So as both sides, the foreigners and the Moors, are both taking two steps backwards because the Moors have to get themselves back in order in order to come back to the table. The foreigners have to do the same thing. They've got to take two steps backwards and come back to the table in order to maintain order because both sides have been in dishonor. Both sides have been now, not maintaining equal balance, okay? So Morris have to really understand what's happening quickly. Reign of order. Both sides have to reign in their order in order to get back to peace and prosperity in Morocco. Let's continue. And recognizing, you know what that word recognizing is in a lot of the declarations. If Morris go back and read the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, it talks about recognizing it's in all capital letters when you read the rights of indigenous people. Why is that? Because the United Nations is trying to tell the United States of America and any of the colonial third states, in all caps, they're making a demand saying, once these Moors wake up, y'all gonna be in trouble, foreigners. So y'all need to recognize and wake up that the Moors are waking up. Y'all need to get back into order before the Moors force you into order, and they're going to cause you pain. Moors are going to cause pain on foreigners because we're trying to get back into order. What is order? Like I told you about a bee. This pen, Moors, sometimes will cause pain to some of the foreigners because they're out of order. But that's all right because they are making their own self-determination. But order will come back into balance one way or the other, all right? So recognizing that the attainment thereof can only be affected by means of the introduction of reforms based upon the triple principle of the sovereignty and independence of his majesty, the sultan, sultan, the integrity of his domains and economic liberty without any inequality, okay? So I've got that quote right up here, boys. Listen, we're gonna get into equal protections of the law. What are we talking about? Treaty of supreme law of the land. Integrity of domains, economic liberty, without any inequality. We're talking about what? Bringing back order. Order have 
resolve. Okay, listen more. So why did the Sultan bring everybody together? Create order. His majesty, the Sultan, the integrity of his domains and the economic liberty without any inequality have resolved. So let's go back to the top. Let's make it clean. Inspired by the interest attaching itself to the reign of order, peace, and prosperity in Morocco, and recognizing that the attainment of thereof can only be affected by means of introduction of reforms. Moors are introducing reforms right now based upon the triple principle of the sovereignty and independence of his majesty. Of his majesty, the sultan, the integrity of his domain and economic liberty without any inequality have resolved. So what's happening? Yeah, remember now, the United States of America is pointing this out. That the United States of America has agreed to what? Integrity of Morocco, of domains, Morocco's domains. The United States of America has agreed to what? Economic liberty in Morocco. And the United States of America has agreed to, without any inequality, have resolved. Integrity of domains, economic liberty, without any inequality, that the order now have resolved. That's in the preamble. What, what am I trying to say? That it's already been set forth that the citizens of the United States of America and the United States, because of their administrators, have already agreed to certain principles but it's up to the Moors now to make that claim to these said principles. That the citizens of the United States of America, more specifically administrators, are not going to extend these principles. It's up to Moors to bring in this order. Keep in mind, this is happening in Morocco, that the Sultan brought the Christians together. Guess who has to do that in the 21st century? It's got to be the Moors to bring the Christian powers back together. More specifically, the foreigner that's in Morocco right now, the only foreigner that's claiming some type of compensatory regime in Morocco. So now we must now let the foreigners know it's time now to rein in order. How do we do that? We do that through consular court. All right? So let's start from the top. This is going to make sense to you, Morris. Why am I reading this? You're going to find out that the ICJ talked about this as well, okay? Talking about equality. Inspired by the interest attaching itself to the reign of order, peace, and prosperity in Morocco, and recognizing that the attainment thereof can only be affected by means of the introduction of reforms based upon the triple principle of sovereignty, that's birthright, and independence of his majesty, Who is His Majesty the Sultan now? That's the states. Listen to me, Moors. You must understand, in the year 1956, the Sultan of Morocco claimed his independence. In the year 1962, that Sultan now has changed his status to King of Morocco, more specifically, Kingdom of Morocco, which is a state provincial government within the Moroccan Empire. There are no more sultans. By his own self-determination, de talking about the King of Morocco, there are no more sultans. Now who is the sultan? The states. The states are now self-governing because of what happened in 1969. You must understand in 1969, which is the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties, that the King of Morocco signed that as well, agreeing that it's about state rights. So the King of Morocco himself 
is only claiming his self rights, I mean state rights of the Kingdom of Morocco. In other words, the United States of America has tried to negotiate a way to remove the word Sultan because they think the word Sultan controls the empire. Once the word Sultan is no longer being used ever, ever since 1956, more specifically 1962, there's no more Sultan. So who's left now? State rights as of 1969. You got to catch it, boys. We're talking politics right now. State rights. As Moors create their states in Morocco, the empire, our states are now effectively the Sultan. That must be understood because Sultan is just a title of government. Moors must catch that. Okay, so His Majesty, the states, the integrity of the dominions of the states and the economic liberty of the states without any inequality have resolved. The states shall resolve all of the inequality that's going on right now in Morocco. Upon the invitation of his Sharif and Majesty to call together a conference at Al Jazeera's for the purpose of arriving at an understanding upon the said reforms as well as examining the means for obtaining the resources necessary for their application, for their application, application, and appointed as their delegates, plenipotentiary, the following. See the word application is coming back into play, Morse? We must understand the applications, Morse. Friendly applications. Article 24, Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Friendly applications. Friendly applications. It's about applications. What are applications right now, Morris? Our Constitution. Our state of facts. What else are application, Morris? That is our injunctive relief order. That's an application. What else is an application? Contempt of court order, which is just the order. That's an application. Since Morris started under this understanding the step-by-step -step process of how to use constant court, we're talking applications. Because those are the reforms on how to bring back order. Okay? All right, boys. Let's now study something else that the United States of America said. They put on the record. This is still the act of, act of Al Jazeera's Year 1906, if more is to go down, if you're looking at the same PDF, go down to page number 51 on the PDF. It has more notes. Okay, this is at the bottom. President of the United States of America, these are their notes. These are more disclosures and agreements that the United States of America, not to be confused, the United States, because the United States has also agreed to this. Remember, two separate entities. Let's read what the United States of America said on the record. All right, if I have mother read this. And whereas the said general act and additional protocol were signed by the plenipotentiaries of the United States of America under reservation of the following declaration. Quote, the government of the United States of America, having no political interest in Morocco, and no desire or purpose having animated it to take part in this conference other than to secure for all peoples the widest equality of trade and privilege with Morocco. Stop. Okay, Morris, let's listen. United States of America, this is what they put on the record. And where is the said general act? What general act? Act of the An additional protocol were signed by the plenipotentiaries of the United States of America. They let you know who the parties are. Under reservation of the following declaration, quote, the government of the United States of America, having no political interest in Morocco, and no desire or purpose having animated it to take part in this conference 
other than to secure for all peoples the widest equality of trade and privilege with Morocco. What's happening? They're enforcing integrity of domains in Morocco. They're enforcing economic liberty in Morocco. And they're enforcing without any inequality. That's why they say they're enforcing equality. Where the word equality? The widest equality of trade. Yep, there it is. Okay. They're trying to maintain the widest equality, not inequality. We're going to learn about this word today, Morse. Okay? So what's happening? Listen, Morse. Quote, unquote, the United States of America has no political interest in Morocco. What does that mean? Why is that important to understand, Morris? What's political mean? States. Morris are putting together their state provincial governments, which are political in nature. You must understand that the United States of America has agree agreed not to intervene with the political interest of Morocco. This is their agreement. Let's read it again. The government of the United States of America having no political interest in Morocco and no desire or purpose having animated it to take part in this conference other than to secure for all peoples the widest equality of trade and privilege with Morocco. You must understand the United States of America cannot intervene with the politics of Moors as we're now starting to put together our state provincial governments. This is all going to make sense to you. Let's continue. If you can continue uh, from here, Mother. And to facilitate the institution of reforms in that country, tending to ensure complete cordiality of intercourse without and stability of administration within for the common good, declares that in acquiescing to in the regulations and declarations of the conference, in becoming a signatory to the General Act of Adversaries and to the additional protocol subject to ratification according to constitutional procedure. Stop. Okay, Morris. We're, we're unpacking a lot here. You really have to pay attention to what the United States of America is saying on the record. Listen. And to facilitate the institution of reforms. What reforms? Reforms for Morocco to come back into order of power, prosperity, equality. In that country, what country? Morocco, tending to ensure complete cordiality of intercourse without and stability of administration within for the common good. Declares that in acquiescing, listen, Morris, in acquiescing, in acquiescing, in acquiescing, and the regulation and declaration of the conference. What does that mean? The United States of America has acquiesced and agreed to maintain Morocco's integrity of domains. The United States of America has acquiesced in the agreement of economic liberty in Morocco. The United States of America has agreed to without any inequality. Why is inequality important, Morris? Because they can't do anything that's based in inequality against our more state rights. We're talking political rights. The states have their own equal right on the protection of the law. Equal protection of the law. We're going to get into that. All right? So it's already ordered and have resolved that the United States of America have no political interest in Morocco. That's very important to understand more. We'll get into that deeper later on. So right here, Morris. Listen, Morris. United States of America acquiesced. This is United States of America's words. They have acquiesced, acquiescing in regulations and declarations of the conference and become the signator the General Act of Alcatraz and to the additional protocols subject to ratification according to the constitutional procedure. You see that, Morris? The United States of America's Constitution, Article 6, Article 6, Clause 2, talks about what? Treaty the supreme law of the land. The United States of America, under their constitutional procedure, 
No, the treaties are supreme law of the land. The Act of Al-Jazeera of 1906 is the supreme law of the land in Morocco. And if the United States of America has already acquiesced and agreeing to that, don't get me wrong, they've already agreed to all the treaties as well prior to 1906, but as you can see, the United States of America keeps agreeing that all the treaties are in force. Okay, mom, let's pick it up from... Uh, let's pick it up from here, mom, okay? In acquiescence, acquiescing. In acquiescing in the regulations and declarations of the conference, in becoming a signatory to the General Act of Algeciras and to the additional protocol subject to ratification according to constitutional procedure, and in accepting the application of those regulations and declarations to American citizens and interests in Morocco. It does so without assuming obligation or responsible responsibility for the enforcement thereof. And whereas in giving its advice and consent to the ratification of the said general act and additional protocol, the Senate of the United States resolved as a part of this act of ratification that the Senate understands that the participation of the United States in the Algeciras Conference and in the formulation and adoption of the general act and protocol which resulted therefrom was with the sole purpose of preserving and increasing its commerce in Morocco. The protection as to life, liberty, and property of its citizens residing. Thank you, Mother. All right, let's go back. What are they talking about? Okay, let's pick it up from here. That to ratification according to constitutional procedure, and accepting the application of these regulations and declarations to American citizens and interest in Morocco, it does so without assuming obligation or responsibility for the enforcement thereof. Wait a minute. So the United States of America agreed. Then why don't they turn around and say, but, but, but it does so without assuming obligation or responsibility for the enforcement thereof. What are they talking about? Well, they're going to tell you what they're talking about. Watch this. And whereas in giving its advice and consent to the ratification of the said general act and additional protocol, the Senate, the Senate, you remember we looked up the definition, we started understanding the definition of the civil law. Civil law talked about the Roman law. And who controlled the Roman law? The Senate controlled the ordinance. So what you must understand, Morris, the United States of America, who operates on an international level, still has to bring this treaty back to the United States, separate entity. And then the United States, through their Senate, which is their House of Representatives, the Senate, and then their executive branch, must now accede and accept or adopt the Treaty of Act of Algeciras, 1906. It's going to make sense to you. So keep in mind, the United States of America agreed, but it says, but it does so without assuming obligation or responsibility for the enforcement of thereof. Why? Because only the United States can enforce the treaty because it's two separate entities. Listen. Start from here. And whereas in giving its advice and consent to the ratification of the said general act and additional protocol, the Senate of the United States resolved. See how they separated? The United States. Up here, the United States of America. This paragraph, he's talking about the United States, two separate entities. As a part of this act of ratification, that the Senate understands that the participation of the United States in the Algeciras Conference and in the formulation and adoption of the General Act and Protocol, which resulted therefrom, was with the sole purpose of preserving and increasing its commerce in Morocco. See, the reason why they're signing these treaties, Lord, because it's about money to them. 
It's not about equality. It's about inequality if they can get away with it. As long as they're now maintaining commerce, they agree. If they can't maintain commerce, then they disagree. Listen more. Let's pick it up from here. And in the formation and adoption, you see there? And adoption more. They're adopting through the United States. The United States of America agreed because they signed the Act of Sarah. But now they got to bring it back locally to the United States and adopt it. The United States, two separate entities. Start here. And adoption of the General Act and Protocol which resulted therefrom was with the sole purpose of preserving and increasing its commerce in Morocco. The protection as to life, liberty, and property of its citizens residing or Okay, mother, you can pick it up from there, please. Or traveling therein, and of abiding by its friendly offices and efforts in removing friction and controversy, which seem to menace the peace between the powers signatory with the United States to the Treaty of 1880, all of which are on terms of amity with this government, and without purpose to depart from the traditional American foreign policy, which forbids participation by the United States in the settlement of political questions which are entirely European in their scope. And whereas the said general act and additional protocol were duly ratified by the governments of the United States of America and of the other powers aforesaid and by His Majesty the Sultan of Morocco. Stop. Thank you, Mother. Okay. Now they're admitting they did, finally did adopt the Act of Algeceres. So not only does the United States of America have obligations, so does the United States. Let's read it again. And traveling therein, and of aiding by its friendly offices and efforts in the removing friction and controversy, which seem to menace the peace between the power signatory with the United States, to the Treaty of 1880, all of which are on terms of amity with this government, and without purpose to depart from the traditional American foreign policy, which forbids American foreign policy, which forbids American foreign policy, which forbids participation by the United States in the settlement of political questions, which are entirely European in their scope. What's happening? See, the United States can't get involved with politics of states because states are talking international law. Only the United States of America as the entity can get involved with political disputes dealing with mores. However, the United States of America has left it up to who? The United States and there are several states to deal with mores. It's an oxymoron. So therefore, if the mores start to use cost to court, understand mores. As you start to deal with the United States and there are several states, no worries, because there are several states which are municipal corporations, privately owned, privateers, based upon their self-determination. Moors get to treat them like third states. Understand that the United States is still obligated to all treaties, even as a third state. Even though on an international level, they can't operate. Moors can operate on an international level at all times in all places, because more, the word more itself is an international word, because more are all around planet Earth. But as we talk about latitude, longitude of our constitution, now we're talking about our part and parcel latitude, longitude of the Moorish empire, okay? But what's the most important thing I want to point out to you, Moors? That American foreign policy, which forbids participation by the United States in the settlement of political questions, which are entirely European in their scope. The United States can't get involved with Moors. They can't stop Moors from putting together their states. Neither can the United States of America. Moors must understand this is two separate entities, but this is the United States of America's president talking, and then he's, he's even talking about the United States. And whereas the said general act and additional protocol were duly ratified by the government, of the United States of America and of other powers aforesaid 
And by his majesty, the Sultan of Morocco. Okay, Mother, you can continue. And whereas in pursuance of Article 121 of the said General Act, the ratifications of the said General Act and additional protocol of all the signatory powers were deposited with the government of His Majesty the King of Spain on December 31, 1906, thereby constituting a valid exchange of the ratifications thereof. Now, therefore, be it known that I, Theodore Roosevelt, President of the United States of America, have caused the said General Act and additional protocol to be made public to the end that the same and every article and clause thereof may be observed and fulfilled with good faith by the United States and the citizens thereof, subject to the reservation made in the aforesaid declaration of the plenipotentiaries of the United States and to the resolution of the Senate. In witness whereof, I have here, hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States of America to be here unto affixed, done at the city of Washington this 22nd day of January in the year of our Lord 1907, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 131st, Theodore Roosevelt, by the president. Mm -hmm. All right. So what was the purpose of reading this more? You must understand that the United States of America and the United States are obligated to the Act of Algeceres 1906. They are perfectly aware of this, okay? So, as we start to use our power through across the court, as Morris must understand, what gives us our delegation of authority orders? I want Morris to understand, as Morris start moving forward now past step number three, which is contempt of court, as Morris now start to move into step four, which is now putting liens on the foreigners' warranty deeds, we must understand what do we derive our delegation of authority orders? And how do we go about doing this? We do this by maintaining equality because that's what the Sultan wanted. He wanted equality in his domain, right? Dominions, okay? Okay. Okay, Morris. <clears throat> now we're talking equal protection of law. This is Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. Why are we going over equal protections of the law? It's because that's what the Sultan wanted. Going back to the preamble. Okay, in the preamble, the preamble is based upon what? On what? The triple principle of the sovereignty and independence of His Majesty the Sultan, the integrity of his domains, and the economic liberty without any inequality. No inequality can happen in Morocco. Moors must understand this. We are equally responsible for maintaining equality and not inequality. See? Equality and not inequality. Why am I underscoring this? As Moors start to understand the power will come to court, we must maintain equality because that is the supreme law of the land a political document called the Act of Algeceres, 1906. Not only do we have to maintain equality through that political application treaty, we must also maintain nature's law, common law, and jurisprudence. Okay? So we're talking justice. So we're talking equal protections of the laws. Where else do we see this word protection? Right of protections in Morocco, Treaty of Madrid, Convention signed Madrid, July 30th, July 3rd, 1880. We'll talk about that later. But we're talking equal protections. Moors have now learned how to use the Treaty of Madrid to their advantage for their own protections. We'll, we'll learn about that. We're talking about equality and protections of the laws, okay? So we can have Mother go ahead and read this. 
equal protection of the laws. The equal protection of the laws of a state is extended to persons within its jurisdiction, within the meaning of the constitutional requirement when its courts are open to them on the same conditions as to others. We like ruler, rules of evidence and modes of procedure for the security of their persons and property, the prevention and redress of wrongs and the enforcement of contracts when they are subjected to no restrictions in the acquisition of property, the enjoyment of personal liberty, and the, and the pursuits of happiness, which do not generally affect others, when they are liable to no other or greater burdens and charges than such as are laid upon others and when no different or greater punishment is enforced against them for a violation of the law. Okay. Go ahead and read the small print, please. Equal protection of the law means that equal protection and security shall be given to all under like circumstances in his life, his liberty and his property, and in the pursuit of happiness and in the exemption from any greater burdens and charges then are equally imposed upon all others under like circumstances. Okay, so what, what are we learning from this more? Equal protection of the laws. We're talking ver vice versa, in like manner. So the Moors have to treat the foreigners with equal protection of the law. Don't get me wrong, the foreigners haven't been treating the Moors with equal protection of the law. But Moors must get back to what they call honor. Why are we going over this more? We must understand the power of the state and the power of council court. There is no higher sovereignty. There is no higher status of a loyal than what Moors have through their states and their council court. We must understand we, all, we will only be able to hold on to it if we maintain equality. That's the purpose of, of us going through this. We must treat them the way we want to be treated. We only use this pen of constant court when there's inequality. But when we're using this pen because we're looking at inequality, what are we trying to get back to? Equality. We're trying to now determine justice. We're looking for now equal protection of the law. So when you're dealing with the foreigners through cost of court, we're looking for equality, equal protections of the law. That's very important, Morris. Because we have to maintain the supreme law of the land, which is equality. That's in order. Okay, let's break it down. Equal protections of the laws. The equal protection of the laws of a state. Have Morris started realizing the Black Law Dictionary has the word state everywhere. Morris will start understanding the word state that the colonists, i.e. the foreigners, have always known the answer to the test is the word state. Start from the top. Equal protection of the laws. The equal protection of the laws of a state is extended to persons. You see the order they put it in, Morris? The state came first before the persons. Obviously, for Moors, when we have our provincial state governments, we don't have persons, we have people, but Moors have to understand how to use these words and understand how these words are being used, okay? The persons within its jurisdiction. Who, who has the jurisdiction? The state. Within the mean, meaning of the constitutional requirement. Who has the constitution? The state. The state has the constitution that protects the people within its jurisdiction. So how do Moors get equal protection of the law? They need a state. That state has a constitution. That constitution sets up the jurisdiction in order to protect the people. That creates equal protection of the law. Listen, Moors. Black Lives Matter movements are going on. They chant, no justice, no peace. 
no justice, no peace. Black Lives Matter movement want justice because they know with justice comes peace. What are you looking for? Order. What's missing? The state. Moors have to get back into order of our own states because through those states, we are protected by the Constitution. That Constitution sets up the jurisdiction. That jurisdiction protects the people. That gives you equal protection of law. You cannot get equal protection of law from the foreigners. They're not into it for equality. They're into it for inequality under commerce. That's it. So what? Constitutional requirement. Constitutional requirement. Constitutional requirement when its courts are open to them on the same conditions to others with like rules of evidence and modes of procedure. Listen to what I'm saying, boys. Our courts, council courts, are open to them. Who? Who's the them? Moorish nationals as well as who? Foreigners. Council court is when you're dealing with international law. That's consular. It's an international word. So we deal with council court for them, foreigners, must be on the same conditions as to others with like rules. Like rules. What does like mean? Like manner. Rules that are balanced, equality, of evidence and modes of procedure for the security of their person and property, the prevention and redress of wrongs, and the enforcement of contracts. So more is using council court to do what? For security of their person, people, nationals, and property of Moors, and the prevention and redress of wrongs when the foreigners are trying to wrong us, and the enforcement of contracts. What are the contracts? The applications of constitutions, treaties, and conventions, declarations. Those are the contracts, right? Now, everybody should already understand by now, contracts, contracts is a compound word. The prefix con means two. Bilateral, it means two. Con, like a conduit, conduit, conduit is two. Tracks, talk about tracks of land. Okay, so it's a contract between two people talking about land. That's what a contract is, it's about the collateral of land. That's why some contracts don't say contract, they say agreement. Because agreement is not talking about land, it's just an agreement. Some things talk about contracts, but most of us don't recognize when you're talking contract, you're talking estate, you're talking property, you're talking land rights, contracts, okay? When they are subject to no restrictions in the acquisition of property. The prevention and redress of wrongs and the enforcement of contracts when they are subjected to no restriction in the acquisition of property, the enjoyment of personal liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which do not generally affect others, when they are liable to no other or greater burdens and exchanges than such as are laid upon the others, and when no different or greater punishment is enforced against them for a violation of the laws. What does all this mean in, in theory? Must maintain equality for all Moors. You must understand the treaties are a cohabitating agreement, Moors. We must cohabitate and find equality and not inequality. Okay, Moors? So understand when you use the power across the court, it's about equality. It's a redress of something that's unequal. What are we talking about? Application of difference. Subject matter. When something's unequal, you use equality. How do you get the equality? You use justice. You use the equal protections of the law, council court, to get back to what? The integrity of domains. To get back to what? Economic liberty. To get back to what? Without any inequality. It's an order. This order have 
resolved. That's the preamble. How to resolve our problems? It's through the order of equal protections of the law. All right? Okay, boys. This is Article 105 of the Act of Algeceras, 1906, Article 105. We're still talking to equality, boys. If I had a mother read Article 105, please. Article 105. With the view of assuring the application of the principle of economic liberty without any inequality. 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 The signatory powers declare that none of the public services in the Sharifian Empire can be alienated for the advantage of private interests. All right. Okay, Morris. Article 105. Listen, Morris. With a view to assuring the application of the principle of economic liberty without any inequality, the signatory powers declare that none of the public services in the Sharifan Empire can be alienated for the advantage of private interest. Who has private interest? The municipal corporations. These people call themselves having counties and cities. They call themselves having municipal courts, magistrates, all the municipal private interests that all the states of all caps are all private interests. And according to Article 105, it says, with a view to assuring the application of the principle of economic liberty. So what's the application of principle of economic liberty? That's constitution, treaties, declarations, and conventions. But we the people, Moors must now come in and enforce the law, the order of law. What's happening? economic liberty without any inequality. The signatory powers declare that none of the public services in the Sharifan Empire can be alienated for the advantage of private interests. What's this alienated? We can't be pushed out. Moors cannot be pushed out of the equation in Morocco. We can't be alienated. We can't be discriminated against. We can't be molested. You must understand, Moors. Article 105 secures the, pre, the preamble. The preamble talked about equality. It can't be any inequality. Article 105 secures that. There cannot be any private interest that alienates Moors. Can't happen. We're entitled to our self-determination. We're entitled to our political, provincial state governments. We're entitled to economic liberty. That must be understood. Okay, Morris. As most Morris know, I go over this quite often. This is the ICJ Judgment Report. This is the case concerning rights of nationals of the United States of America in Morocco. In Morocco. In Morocco, France versus the United States of America, judgment on August 27, 1952. Why are we going over this? Because I'm going to show you how the ICJ talks about the fact that the United States of America is obligated to the Act of Algeceras as it relates to taxation. So when you're talking tax, what are we talking about? Anything that the Moors put onto the foreigners is really considered a tax. Whether that's putting a lien on their property, putting a lien on their person, liens is nothing but a taxation. That must be understood. What is taxation? It's nothing but a surety bond against people. Okay, so we'll talk about that today. Okay, Morris. This is page 207 of France versus United States of America on the PDF. It's page 35. Okay, why are we getting ready to go over this? As we started learning, go through step one, step two, and step three. Contempt of court order. We're talking now fines, i.e. lawsuit, litigation. 
the more started using the act of Algeceras, Article 101 and 102 that talks about fines. We're talking fines, penalties, and confiscations, right? We're still talking equality and not inequality. But what I must prove to the Moors is this and qualify. As Moors start to take steps towards enforcing council court, we must have the confidence in moving forward. Why do I say that? See, the United States of America and the United States is hoping that Moors are paper titans. They hope that Moors don't know how to use this pen, and those that do know how to use it won't use it. So I'm going to show the Moors step by step that your delegation authority orders have already been set forth for you to move forward with this pen. So I need more to understand, based upon reference points and qualification, that all Moors must understand with their confidence through their state and confidence through council court that this pen has already been designated, it's already been ordained through order to maintain equality and economic liberty. All right, so the economic liberty is also, we'll be talking about what? Fines, penalties, and confiscations. That's economic liberty because we're trying to get back into order because it's been a contempt of court order. Okay, so we're going to read. Like I said, the judgment, this is one of the pages, okay? All right, so if I can have Mother start from right here. The court is? The court is consequently unable to hold that the imposition of these consumption taxes contravenes any treaty rights of the United States. In such circumstances, the question of a partial refund of consumption taxes paid by United States nationals does not arise. Okay, stop. Okay, let's get the proper consciousness of what happened. Since we're now taking a snapshot of the judgment, why was this paragraph being mentioned? Remember, more when we went over this, France was charging the United States of America taxes for imports that going in and out of Morocco, i.e. The, the French zone. So right here, the ICJ was talking about the fact that the United States of America is responsible for taxes. But keep in mind, when we're talking taxes, we're talking fines, penalties, confiscation, because tax is just a general word for liens. Tax is just a general word for surety bond. That's all tax is, okay? For being in someone else's land. Understand something, Morris. If Moors can tax the foreigners, what does that tell you? Listen to me, Morris. Sovereigns don't pay taxes. Only foreigners in that sovereign's land. Watch how the ICJ is pointing out that the United States of America is still responsible for paying taxes. Why? Because they're the foreigner in Morocco. So who gets to tax them? Moors. But I'll see in this ICJ report, France was taxing them because the Moors wasn't doing it. All right? So let's learn from France what's happening here. This is a reference point so Moors understand. When you start putting liens on their deeds, these are some of the concepts you must understand that you're using right here, okay? Listen more. The court is, ICJ court, consequently unable to hold that the imposition of these consumption taxes contravenes any treaty rights of the United States. In such circumstances, the question of a partial refund of consumption taxes paid by the United States nationals does not arise. See, the United States at this time was trying to get the taxes they paid to France to try to get it back. The court said, nah, you can be taxed if you're in Morocco. Okay, mom. here's where it's about to get interesting, okay? Continue. It follows from the above mentioned considerations that the government of the United States is not entitled to claim that taxes, including consumption taxes, shall be submitted to the previous consent of that government before they can legally be collected from nationals of the United States. Since they are in the opinion of the court not exempt from the payment of any taxes in the French zone, there is no legal basis for the claim that laws and regulations on physical matters shall be submitted to fiscal. the... Fiscal. Fiscal. On fiscal. 
Physical. Physical. Physical matters. Financial matters. Physical. Physical. Yep. Physical. Right. So okay, let's start where it says there is no legal. There is no legal basis for the claim that laws and regulations on fiscal matters shall be submitted to United States authorities for approval. The conclusion which the court has thus arrived at seems to be in accordance with the attitude which other states have taken with regard to this question. Tax immunity in the French zone is not claimed either by the United Kingdom or by Spain or any other state which previously enjoyed such a privileged position. The only state now claiming this privilege is the United States. Though no tax immunity is guaranteed by its treaty with Morocco of 1836. To recognize tax immunity for United States nationals alone would not be compatible with the principle of equality of treatment in economic matters on which the act of Algeciras is based. Okay, now, this is the reason why I had the Moors read the act of Algeciras preamble first, then go all the way to the bottom to read the United States of America's footnotes about their obligations to the act of Algeciras. Then we went into Article 105 to understand there can't be any inequality that they must maintain, that Moors can maintain economic liberty in their own land, and that no privateers can do anything to alienate Moors. Okay, so listen, this is the ICJ judgment that the United States of America is bound to. They have no choice but to comply to this. Let's start from the top, make it clean so I can make it make sense to everybody. The court, the ICJ court, is consequently unable to hold that the imposition of these consumption taxes contravenes any treaty rights of the United States. What does that mean immediately, Moors? Consumption taxes, Moors can charge the United States consumption taxes because there's nowhere in the treaty that says that they can't be taxed. In such circumstances, the question of partial refund of consumption taxes paid by the United States nationals does not arise. So the United States have been paying taxes to France, which means Moors can get the United States of America to pay taxes. If France can get them to pay taxes, France is not even the Moroccans in Morocco. They're not the Moors of Morocco. Listen, Moors. It follows from the above mentioned consideration that the government of the United States is not entitled to claim that the taxes, including consumption taxes, shall be submitted to the previous consent of that government before they can legally be collected from the nationals of the United States. What happened? The United States was trying to say first, people have to petition to them for the United States to agree to pay taxes. That's not true, because the treaties automatically say that any decision made by Moors comes back to counsel and comes to court. So the question about taxes hasn't truly been addressed because only Moors can truly tax them. So you must understand Moors right here. The United States are trying to say they can't be taxed in Morocco. Why? Because they thought they were the conquering party. The ICJ has made it very clear that the citizens of the United States can be taxed. Listen, since they are in the, who is the they? United States, that they are in the opinion of the court, not exempt from the payment of any taxes in the French zone. What does that mean? What does ICJ, ICJ just say? That the United States is not exempt from the payment of any taxes. The United States, United States, United States is not exempt from the payment of any taxes. In Morocco, remember what I said, Morris. Taxation is also the word for the word lien. We'll be talking about liens in the future as it relates to their deeds. That's why I'm taking you over this, okay? There is no legal basis for the claim that the laws and regulation of the fiscal matters shall be submitted to the United States authorities for approval. We don't need their approval to tax them. 
which means we don't need their approval to put liens on their properties either because their properties are secured by a deed and you're gonna find out those deeds are only under the authority of Moore. We'll learn about that. So I'm, I need Moore to, at home to understand where do you derive your delegation authority to tax foreigners? Even ICJ talks about it. Jack Alvarez talks about it. We'll keep talking about these more. This will become redundant. The conclusion which the court has thus arrived at seems to be in accordance with the attitude which other states have taken with regard to this question. Tax immunity in the French zone is not claimed either by the United Kingdom or by Spain or any other state which previously enjoyed such a privileged position. The only state now claiming this privilege is the United States though no tax immunity is guaranteed by its treaty with Morocco of 1836. They have no immunity of taxes. More, look at that. Hold up. Okay, right here. The United States has no tax immunity. The United States has no tax immunity. You see that, Morris? That's well settled principles. The Moors are going to tax the United States and the United States of America and their several corporations, i.e., their employers. The employers of corporations who are trying to get more of the jab are going to get taxed. Taxed how? Through cost of court. Because tax is another word for lien. What's another word for lien? Contempt of court, lien, which is levied. Sanctions. That's all taxes are, sanctions. Listen to me, Morris. I'm trying to make sense of this for you. When we start to use cost of court to put liens on their properties, i.e. sanctions, it's nothing but a tax. And the United States is not, does not have tax immunity. So where do Moors get their delegation authority order from? The treaty with Morocco of 1836. That's the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787, 1836. You see how the ICJ went back to the original treaty? Continuing the reading. To recognize tax immunity for the United States nationals alone would not be compatible with the principle of equality of treatment in economic matters on which the Act of Algeceres is based. What do they do, Morris? Look, they pulled in the treaty, the Treaty of Morocco of 1836, and then the ICJ went to the Act of Algeceres. What's happening, Morris? Morris have to learn how to use these treaties to their advantage. That's your delegation of authority orders to put sanctions on the foreigners, because what? The foreigners are maintaining inequality. So Moore's got every right to get back to equality and use justice. But we must use equal protections of the law. What's the equal protection of the law? We must be de jure. That's what makes us equal to our states and council court to maintain our integrity of our domains, which is our state provincial governments, to maintain the economic liberty without any inequality. Let's continue. This is a very powerful document we're going to read, Morris. We've gone over this before. What is this? This is the summary page of France versus United States of America. The summary page is called Case Concerning Rights of Nationals of the United States of America in Morocco the judgment. It's the judgment page. Remember, Morris, you remember how it looked? For those at home who have this particular document, we went over this several times. Okay, Morris, remember we talked about sections two and three, how the United States gets to maintain jurisdiction over Moors. We went over sections four and five. Talking about council courts, etc. 
Now let's get into section six and seven more. This is very germane to the conversation. Remember, we're talking about equality and not inequality. We're talking about justice, equal protections of the law. We're talking cost of court. Okay, if I had a mother's read section six of the summary, okay? By six votes to five, no treaty provides any basis for the claim of the United States to fiscal immunity for its citizens, nor can such an immunity capitulatory in origin be justified by the effect of the most favored nation clause since no other state enjoys it for the benefit of its nationals. Okay, thank you, Mother. This is powerful, powerful words, Morris. Listen. No treaty provides any basis for the claim of the United States to fiscal immunity for its citizens. That's just a standalone sentence by itself. What does that mean, Morris? We're going to learn about the definition of fiscal. We're not going to go into it today. Next class, we're going to go into that word. We're talking what? Finance. We're talking economic liberty. Economic liberty. Okay? So fiscal immunity. What does that mean? Taxation. Fiscal immunity means sanctions. Fiscal immunity means liens, fines, penalties, confiscations. Fiscal immunity. Read it again. No treaty provides any basis for the claim of the United States to fiscal immunity for its citizens. The United States of America citizens have no immunity mores from cost of courts, contempt of court order that now talks about fines, penalties, and confiscations. Listen to the next sentence, Morris. Listen, this is important. Nor can such an immunity capitulatory in origin be justified by the effect of the most favored nation clause since no other state enjoys it for the benefit of its nationals. What are they talking about? Listen, boys. The ICJ, when you read the entire report, they are summarizing here. What are they saying? That the United States of America, nor the United States, can maintain their conquest. They cannot maintain their so-called privileged jurisdiction over Moors perpetually. They can't do it. And the ICJ came out and told the United States and the United States of America, we're not going to sit here and rewrite the treaties for you. The treaties are at full force. And according to the treaties, the other party to the treaty is a Moor. And that Moor is not here to protect themselves. So therefore, these treaties are going to remain in force. So listen. So the ICJ says, nor can such an immunity of compensatory in origin be justified by the effect of the most favored nation clause since no other state enjoys it for the benefit of its nationals. What does that mean? See, when another state conquers another state through annexation, that annexing state cannot remain in that land forever. As soon as the people fight back and want autonomy through their state governments, immediately that annexing state has to now release those conquered people. The conquered people have every right to self-determination of their nationality based upon their latitude, longitude of their state provincial government. Human rights. So what did the ICJ tell the United States of America? The United States, nor can you have immunity. Was, why were they talking about immunity? They wanted the ICJ to say that the United States of America could maintain their conquest over more. The ICJ said, we can't agree to that. That's not what the treaty said. Capitulatory in origin. Listen, Morris. What is the United States of America trying to hold on to? Capitulatory regime. That's the answer to the test. That's the only thing they're holding on to. What does capitulatory mean, Morris? Listen to me. It means the Moors acquiesced to be conquered people. That we have agreed through tacit acquiescence or just plain old acquiescence to allow the United States of America to maintain a jurisdiction in our heads. 
not over the land, over the people's heads. As soon as we come back into the consciousness of self and put together our state provincial governments, immediately the so-called capitulation regime is now done. Why? Because of this pen. Nature's law, mother's law, matriarchal council of the three branches of government immediately is the answer to the test and the ICJ is telling the telling all Moors. The only thing the United States of America got on you Moors is this. Y'all capitulated. You acquiesced Moors to being Negro, Black, and color or Moors with a nationality that are stateless. It's that easy, Moors. Listen, this is the ICJ talk. Okay, let's get into number seven as we start to wrap up. Okay, Mom. By seven votes to four as to the consumption taxes imposed by the Daher of February 28th, 1948, these are payable on all goods, whether imported into Morocco or produced there. They are not, therefore, customs duties the maximum rate for which was fixed at 12.5% by the signatory powers of the Act of Algeciras. Citizens of the United States are no more exempt from these taxes than from any other. Okay, Morris. Let's focus in on the last sentence. Don't worry about the above sentence because that was about the economic, the her of 1940, which is the economic trade agreement that France had with the other Christian powers. Let's get to the last sentence. That's what's germane here. Citizens of the United States are no more exempt from these taxes than from any others. The United States of America citizens can be taxed by who? Moors. Who are the Moors? The sovereigns. But who's really taxing the Moors? The state. We learn that under equal protections of the law comes through the state. So when we start to now tax them through council court, council court and the state work hand in hand to now bring taxation to the citizens of the United States. Who are the citizens of the United States? That's there are several states. Keep in mind, Morris, all of their foreign states, they claim all of their foreign states, let's use Arizona as an example. State of Arizona, on the record, is listed as person. All of their municipal corporations, such as, let's say, IBM, is a person. You'll learn when they talk, when they, when they get close to their so-called um, votes, when they got an election year coming up, they have all learned that states are people too. They'll tell you that on the record. States are people too, and corporations are people too. I don't like to talk about state statutes, but if you go back and read the Clearfield Act, I believe it was the year 1952, 42, 1942, Clearfield, it says, that the United States is not a public government. They are a private corporation, which makes all their so-called several state private corporations, and all corporations are considered people through the 14th Amendment. Persons, more specifically. So you must understand, so who are the citizens more? Let's think about it. Who are the citizens? All of their states, and all of the corporations, such as their municipal so-called courts, such as whatever corporation is trying to make you take the jab, there are citizens. The corporations and your employer is a citizen too. So Morris must understand, when we tax them, we tax everything that they have their name on. Everything in Morocco we consider to be foreign in our land, we consider to be the citizens. Okay, Morris? All right. So, with that being said, as I start to wrap up, when we go on to the next class, we'll go over the definition of fiscal. Okay, so we start learning that. Why is that important, Morris? 
as we start understanding how to put liens on their properties, we're talking about fiscal. We're talking finance. Okay, Morris, we're talking economic liberty. We'll get into that a little bit more, all right? So as I start to close, understand something, Morris. More state status determines our destination. Number one, jurisprudence equals Moore's nationality. Number two, Moore's nationality equals jurisdiction. Number three, jurisdiction equals more states. Number four, more states equals more constitutions. Number five, more constitutions equals more treaty enforcement. Number six, more treaty enforcement equals more council courts. Number seven, Moore's council courts equal remedy of subject matter. But subject matter is what? Application of difference. And when we're dealing with an application of difference, we must be looking for equality because if there's an application of difference, we're talking inequality. Moore's have an obligation to get back to equality to enforce justice, but we must do that with equal protections of the law. We must respect nature's law, mother's law, common law, jurisprudence of our state, our state constitution, as well as consular court must always be in honor. I end with that. Islam. Islam. Yes,